So in a previous video, we talked a little bit about what is emotion, um, what's some of the basic characteristics of emotion, and, and we just started a conversation, a really good conversation about emotion, and I wanted to continue that a little bit here by talking about some of the influences on emotional expression. Where does this come from? Where do our uh, emotions come from and what you know factors are there that influence how we experience and how we express an emotion particularly? So let's take a look at some of those influences and factors on emotional expression. First, our personality plays a big role in emotion, right? Some of us are, I mean, we're just wired differently in a sense, emotionally speaking. Some of us are, are more high strung. Some of us are more low key. Um, and neither of those is, is intended as a judgment. Sometimes high strung people need to be, you, know, you need that in a person. And sometimes low key people, I tend to be a little more low key emotionally and I get, uh, accused of being, uh, not, not, not as feeling as I should be, you know, not experiencing emotions the way I should. But so, but our personality, you know, we're just sort of born with some of this hardwired in, in terms of, are we, how do we have a calmer personality or do we have a, uh, a more, you know, out there personality? And how does that influence then how we experience and how we express these emotions? And some of that's just DNA. So it's just how we're wired. Another major influence is our culture. There are cultures that that encourage emotional expression, like those of us in Western cultures, Westernized cultures in the United States and Western Europe, Canada, places like that. We are encouraged to express our emotion, to just bluntly state, I'm feeling this or I'm you know, having this emotion. There are other cultures where uh, that's not as encouraged, right, that where they're encouraged to kind of keep that to themselves. That's not, you know, expected that, that people would express emotion, that you're just supposed to kind of bottle it up a little bit more. And to us, that seems unhealthy and, and may not seem wise, but to other cultures that that's about maintaining the, the collective perspective, right? That, that just because you're feeling something doesn't necessarily mean we need to have everybody feel that. So um, they're thinking about the whole rather than just the individual. And uh, so your culture, though, will have a massive influence on how you experience and how you express those emotions. Gender will also play a role. Uh, and by gender, remember, we're not talking about biological sex here. We're talking about um, the, 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 you know, masculine, feminine or androgynous type of, of gender that you, that you maintain, that you kind of subscribe to and that you develop and that you, you build from. Um, so um, that the different genders view emotion differently uh, through socialization, right? We're taught uh, through, through this, that, uh, that genders experience and express emotion differently. And so while it's all, you know, this, these are generalizations, we're not talking about individuals, we're talking about generally speaking. So it could be different for each, each individual, but we know that in general, uh, masculine and feminine gendered people tend to have different uh, relationships with their emotions, so to speak, right? They tend to experience and express emotion differently. Your social roles and convention, which again comes back in some ways to culture, but in a very specific way. What are the expectations for you socially uh, where you grew up? You know, if this was the 1950s America, then the social roles and conventions would be the, that women stay at home. They take care of families. They raise children, right? They, they maintain the home while the, the men go out and earn a living and things like that. Um, now we know that that's not our social role and convention, that, that men and women both work outside the home, that men and women can both stay and, and, and raise children if either of them is going to. Sometimes kids are uh, you know, not raising themselves, but both parents work. So you make adjustments for that. What are the social roles and conventions? Uh, when I was growing up in the, you know, in the eighties and nineties was much more of a me time, right? M much more of a me focus. So we were encouraged to express, or it was okay for us to express our emotions much more bluntly. Now in, in the modern day, we're, we're expected to be a little more considerate about what other people may uh, feel about that or how they may react and almost to the other extreme, to, to an extreme uh, of that. end. so, uh, but the social roles and conventions change over time and, and they change as we grow and, and age and different things. So. Social media certainly has had an influence on emotion as well, um, due to you know most largely what we call the disinhibition effect, where we know that the people who are separated by a screen, that tends to amplify emotion in a lot of ways. We tend to see a lot more emotional expression um, happen a lot faster. So that that plays out in a couple different ways. First, you see a lot of a lot of anger, for example, through social media. People are much more inclined to just let loose and call somebody names and and start spitting fire uh, on social media than they would be probably if that person was was right in front of them in a face to face way. We also see relationships develop much faster, for example, in the online environment um, because um, you know, emotion is experienced differently there. So you're you're more inclined to. 
uh, share and self-disclose at a higher rate uh, online than you would be in a face-to-face -face relationship. So again, for better or worse, those are things that happen via social media. We experience things differently when we have a screen between us and the other person. And it certainly impacts emotion, uh, the, the experience and expression of emotion in, in many ways via social media. So the idea of emotional contagions, right? Contagions being things like, you know, if you have the common cold or you have the flu or something, we know that those can be passed from person to person, right? We know that one of the reasons that COVID, for example, was so dangerous, COVID-19 was so dangerous, was that it was passed so easily from person to person. It was aerosolized and emotions are much the same way. They can be passed from person to person and, and, and it doesn't take all that much. They're really highly contagious. You do this experiment, you walk into a classroom, or walk into a room and you'll be able to probably influence the emotion. If you're experiencing or expressing an emotion very strongly, then people are likely to, to fall in with that. If you walk in grumbling and angry and so forth, pretty soon you're going to have most people in that room that are angry as well. And the same is true on the flip side. If you go in and you have this bright personality and you're sunny, it's not, everybody's not going to respond that way, but people, when they leave, many people are going to leave in a better mood than they came in with right? because emotions are contagious. We need to be aware of that, that our emotions can kind of uh, be passed to others and rub off on other people. So uh, what kind of emotion do we want to share with the world then? Finally, we can look at the influence of emotional intelligence. Now, emotional intelligence, I want to give you a bit of a definition here and back up a little bit with it. Emotional intelligence is the ability to recognize, understand, and manage your emotions, as well as understand and influence the emotions of others. So let's look at that in, in, in segments here. First of all, recognize, understand, and manage your own emotions. Gosh, that's a challenge, right? That's, that's, a, that's a good skill. Some people are, are have this ability to do this a little more easily than others, but all of us have the ability to some extent to um, recognize, understand, and manage our emotions. That's something we should be working toward. Now, this does not mean that we need to suppress our emotions or that we need to totally be fake with people, but we ought to be able to identify, okay, what emotion am I experiencing right now? We talked in another video about how sometimes the physiological aspects, for example, of a strong emotion are ambiguous. They can be the same for anger and for love and confusion and fear and so forth. So which one am I experiencing? I need to be able to recognize that and identify emotions appropriately that I'm feeling. I also need then to be able to understand them. What does that mean? What implications does it have for me and for other people and, and what triggered that and so forth to understand those things more deeply and then to manage those emotions. Not necessarily, again, to suppress all the emotions that we have, either good or bad, uh, or, or positive or negative valence emotions, but to, to be able to manage them in a sense that just because I feel a strong emotion doesn't mean I have to, first of all, communicate it at all, or secondly, that I have to communicate it in a particular way. Just because I'm angry doesn't mean I have to shout, right? I can manage my anger in different ways. Um, or just because I think I'm in love with someone doesn't mean I have to necessarily jump in and just goo all over them and say, oh, I love you, I love you, I love you. That could be a bit much too. I need to manage that emotion in an appropriate way for myself and for the other person, right? That's, that's part of emotional intelligence. The other part is being able to understand and influence the emotions of others. Now, please recognize this is not saying manipulate the emotions of others. That's not what we're talking about, but to be able to recognize the emotions of others, to kind of identify what emotions they may be experiencing, and then allow that to influence how we interact with them and thereby maybe affect their emotions. If I see that my friend is very sad, I may try and cheer him up, right? Tell him some jokes or tell him some funny stories, reminding him of, of something good, right? I could attempt to influence his emotions in that way. Um, uh, but there's just a variety of ways that, that we can benefit from understanding and being able to influence then the emotions of others. That's what we mean by emotional intelligence. Aristotle kind of summed it up this way. He said, anybody can become angry. That is easy. But to be angry with the right person and to the right degree and at the right time and for the right purpose and in the right way, that is not within everybody's power and is not easy. Really, he's talking about emotional intelligence there. Right. He's saying that, you know, emotional intelligence is not easy. Anybody can experience, can have this emotion and can just let it spill out and, and, you know, wash over them or whatever. But to be able to manage that emotion effectively and constructively, that's really what we're getting at with emotional intelligence. And that is challenging, but it is a skill that we can develop and we should absolutely seek to develop along with understanding and, and really managing all these other aspects of, uh, of influences on our emotion and emotional intelligence then.
So now hopefully we have a better understanding of emotion, where it comes from, what it's influenced by. It's really all of those things. You, you throw them in a blender and, and, and you get how any given individual is going to experience and express that emotion. If you have questions about emotion, specifically the way that it relates to interpersonal communication, please feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you there and be able to continue this discussion in that way. In the meantime, I hope you'll give some thought next time you experience an emotion to, okay, where did this come from? And how did I, I come to see this emotion? Just do a little self-examination about how that influence came to be, what it means for you, and how you might best be able to manage it in terms of experiencing and expressing that emotion.